Hello, everyone out there in our TPN community. I want to welcome you to another session of TPN Talks with Leticia. And I'm very excited to introduce you to our special guest today, Elle Berrier. So Elle, would you please just introduce yourself, maybe your name, pronouns, um, anything that you want to share about yourself kind of outside of work? That would be great. Yeah, hello. My name is Elle Berrier. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I am a gender responsive facilitator and parent coach. Um, some of my passions include animals, um, traveling, and interior design. Thank you, Al. So I'm interested in just sharing out with our community a little bit about the specifics of your role. So if you could talk about kind of what you do here at TPN and then maybe like what a typical day at work is for you. So my current role is being a gender responsive facilitator. So uh, my typical work day includes going to Coffee Creek Correctional Facility, which is the only women's prison in Oregon. Um, and I facilitate groups through Moving On and the Parenting Insight Out programs. My role uh, includes delivering curriculum as well as being a gender responsive individual, which in this context translates to understanding the roles of gender expectations and performances and how they influence somebody's experiences as they go through life. Um, so for the Moving On program, that looks a lot like talking about healthy relationships and domestic violence. Um, and for Parenting Inside Out, that often means understanding the role of mothers and their relationship to their children, um, in which they're typically the primary caregiver whenever they go to Coffee Creek. So a lot of the times with mothers, it's learning how to adjust to their new role with their children, not being the primary caregiver. Thank you. I appreciate you lifting up just kind of, you know, what those kind of important differences are for women. And we talk about a criminal justice system that was built kind of with men in mind. I actually don't know if it was built with, with anyone in mind in particular, but there's just ways that the systems have, have really not been responsive to women and their experiences, unique experiences. So thanks for sharing out what that looks like for you in a, a typical day and, and your role generally. Um, so my next question is just about kind of significant experiences or memories um, in your role um, and any of them that like kind of stick out or have made an impact that you could share with us. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint it to a specific moment sometimes, but um, as a facilitator, you're, whenever you start your class, everybody is really anxious. They don't know what to expect. Um, a lot of times people are like, I'm never going to share anything about myself. Um, and you're like, sounds good at first. Um, and throughout time, you know, things come up, you know, kids' birthdays come up, family members and loved ones pass away, um, or you're just kind of having a rough day. Um, so it's always a significant experience when somebody comes into the room and they share that vulnerable thing that they're going through. Um, and there's like a pivotal moment where other people in class connect with that person and they really start to bond and start to share their stories and empathize and understand like the important role of supporting each other in the room. And so every time that really happens, it just, it makes my heart feel really full because being a facilitator, sometimes the people in the room are the people who can help each other the most and um, just understand what they're genuinely going through and having somebody there to say, I understand and we're here for you in this room. So just that really kind of almost magical, transformative, really sacred space that can be created when we come from a more of a facilitative approach where we're really trying to kind of design and co-create a space where those kind of disclosures and shares can happen and the ways that it kind of brings awareness or, or opens up um, just opportunities for other people. Um, and what we know about like relational development is that people change together, they change in relationships. So that I just feel like it just kind of propels um, change, it propels transformation when we're able to experience those things together. So I love that you lifted that up. 
I want to talk a little bit about our mission. So our mission, you know, is to provide justice system impacted individuals and their families the tools and support that they need to be safe and thrive in our communities. Will you talk a little bit about what that mission means to you? Um, in our mission statement, something that really stands out to me is emphasizing the tools and support part of helping individuals. So in my role, what I usually use this within is when somebody is needing self-care, when somebody needs to take a day off, um, just empathizing with them and supporting them through that experience, um, giving somebody permission to take care of themselves and even supporting them through speaking up and communicating with me whenever they do need that help, um, I think can be a very valuable lesson to take from our class is when you're going through something, it's okay to take a break and it's okay to take care of yourself. That's wonderful. I want to talk a little bit about shared leadership at TPN. So obviously a shift that we made very intentionally to make sure that there's a space for all different kinds of leadership um, all across the agency in different ways. So I'm wondering if you could just share some of the shared leadership opportunities that you've participated in and maybe the value that you see in shared leadership. So I've taken part of shared leadership in a lot of different forms. Um, one of the first things that I did was organizing all of the spaces at Coffee Creek, um, which just, I, I value organization. I love a clear expectation and a clean space. It creates a clean mind. So I really just appreciate, like, when somebody asks me a question, I can always know exactly where it is or what we do or don't have. Um, some other ways I've done shared leadership is I've participated in a lot of interviews and being on the interview panels. Um, I'm currently in a Asana group developing a stream for the DOC onboarding process. And I'm also, I also participated in the diversifying the revenue group. Um, so there's a lot of value within the groups that you get to participate in because you get to learn about other people. You get to learn about their roles and hear about their experiences that they're going through. And you get to experience TPN outside of your specific expectations most of the time, which just, it's just amazing getting to see all of the ways that we're reaching out to other people, all the ways that we are um, working to be a ethical nonprofit and things like that. And just understanding the value of helping each other and all the things that we can do to share this space as individuals within TPN. Is there anything else that you want to share with our community about you or your role? I just, I just love the opportunity that I get every day that I go inside to build a new relationship with somebody, whether it's a CEO, whether it's an AIC, whether it's another staff member. Um, I just, I really enjoy this role and how it allows me to grow and to just hear from so many people and hear from their experiences. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and for having this conversation. And thank you for the, the, the all the work that you do and all your contributions um, and to our community. Thank you for joining again for another um, session of TPN Talks with Leticia. Take care. Mm -hmm.